Shalom, and welcome to another edition of The Truth Shall Make You Free. I'm your host, Elder Nathaniel, and on my right, Deacon Asa. Today's topic is by the rivers of Babylon. But before we get into the topic, let's open up with John 8, verse 32. John chapter 8, verse 32. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. So black man, black woman, Latin man, Latin woman, if you want to be set free, you must humble down to God's truth. What is the truth? That you are the Israelites the Bible speaks of. That you must confess and forsake your sins in the name of Christ. So from there, let's go to Psalms 137. Okay, let's start at verse 1. Psalms chapter 137, verse 1. By the rivers of Babylon, there we sat down. Yea, we wept when we remembered Zion. Now, the prophet David, because King David was a prophet, when he said this, he was prophetically speaking of two things, mainly America, but he also was talking about, um, give me that in Ezekiel chapter 1, verse 1. He's mainly going into America, but I'm going here just in case some of you who think you're Bible scholars, you go, oh no, this is what David's really talking about. Ezekiel chapter 1, verse 1. Mm -hmm. Now it came to pass in the 30th year, in the fourth month, in the fifth day of the month, as I was, I was among the captives by the river of Chabar. He was by the river of Chabar. Now, where was Ezekiel on his way to? Babylon. Let's go back to Psalms 137. But David in the spirit is going beyond ancient Babylon. He's really prophetically speaking of Babylon the Great. Understand that. I'm, everything I say, I'm going to prove it to you. Read it again. Psalms chapter 137, verse 1. Mm -hmm. By the rivers of Babylon, there we sat down. Yea, we wept when we remembered Zion. We hanged our hearts upon the willows in the midst thereof. Now, when it says we wept when we remembered Zion, what does Zion mean? Because a lot of you use the word Zion, but you don't know what it means. Hold on, get me 1 Kings 8 and 1. What does Zion make reference to? Okay, 1 Kings chapter 8, verse 1. 1 Kings chapter 8, verse 1. Then Solomon assembled the elders of Israel and all the heads of the tribes, the chiefs of the fathers of the children of Israel unto King Solomon in Jerusalem, that they might bring up the ark of the covenant of the Lord out of the city of David, which is Zion. Out of the city of David, which is Zion. So Zion refers to the city of David, Jerusalem, wherein all the 12 tribes gathered who believed and followed the Most High God. So now, back to Psalms 137 again. Verse Psalms one. chapter 137, verse 1. Mm. By the rivers of Babylon, there we sat down. Yea, we wept when we remembered Zion. So our forefathers, when we came to the shores in America, we wept when we remembered our homeland, our homeland Jerusalem. Hold that. Get me Galatians, I believe it's 4, verse 26, it might be. Galatians chapter 4, verse 26. But Jerusalem, which is above all, is free. Read it again. But Jerusalem, which is above, is free, mm -hmm. which is the mother of us all. Jerusalem is above all nations, okay? And it says Jerusalem is the mother of us all. So Africa is not the motherland. Jerusalem is the motherland. Let's go back now. Which is another name for Jerusalem is Zion. Let's go back to Psalm. We're going to get out of that one verse. I know we're still hanging there, but there's a purpose behind it. Come on. Psalm chapter 137, verse 1. By the rivers of Babylon, there we sat down. Yea, we wept when we remembered Zion. Yea, we wept when we remembered Zion. Why were we weeping? Because we knew why we were there in captivity, getting off those cargo slave ships. We sat by the rivers of Babylon. Okay? We wept when we remembered our homeland, Zion. Go ahead. We hang our hearts upon the willows in the midst thereof. Why do, what does it mean we hang our hearts upon the willows? You ever hear of the tree, the weeping willow? What does it look like? A very sad tree, the, the leaves thereof hang down like it's in a weeping state. So it said we hanged our hearts upon it because we had no more joy, no more happiness. Go ahead. For there they that carried us away captive required of us a song. For there they that carried us away captive. For there they that carried us away captive. Hold that. Get me Deuteronomy 28. We want verse 68. Okay, this Deuteronomy, is going to explain that. 2868. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 68. Mm -hmm. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again now with this, ships. I need you to read slow. The word Egypt there means bondage. I'm going to prove that to you. Give me Exodus 20 and verse 2. Okay. 
So, now you got a lot of people that think they're clever, think they're smart. No, Egypt means faces, that's Ethiop, Ethiops, okay? But I'm going to show you, when the Bible uses the word Egypt, I'll use this term. It's synonymous. Do you like that word better? It's synonymous for bondage. Hold it. Exodus chapter 20, verse 2. I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt. Out of the land of Egypt. Out of the house of bondage. What do they call Egypt? The house of bondage. Let's go back to Deuteronomy 28, 68. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 68. Listen good. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt. And the Lord shall bring you into bondage. That's what it means. That's what Egypt is synonymous for. Bondage. Again with ships. Again. How? With ships. With ships. With ships. So the Bible is explaining to you how in the last days the children of Israel would get into bondage. Read it again. And the Lord shall bring me into Egypt again with ships. With ships. Now, did the white man go into bondage with ships? Because some of you go, oh, the white man's the real Jew. You stupid as hell. Show me any history where the white man went into slavery on ships. Okay? Show me that. The Bible's talking about the Israelites. Read it again. And the Lord shall bring me into Egypt again with ships. Come on. By the way whereof I spake unto thee. Thou shalt see it no more again. Meaning we won't see our homeland no more, go ahead. And there ye shall be sold. And there, when you got off those ships, read that part again. And there ye shall be sold. And there, meaning once you got off those ships, there you shall what? Shall be sold unto your enemies for bondmen and bondwomen. Slave men and slave women. Slave men and slave women, go ahead. And no man shall buy you. Meaning no man shall save you, redeem you. So once we got off those cargo slave ships, we were sold. Verse 47, we were sold. Now, what were the, one of the characteristics some of the slaves had? Verse 47. I would put it this way. All of the slaves had, but well, listen good. Go ahead. Because thou servest not the Lord thy God with joyfulness and with gladness of heart for the abundance of all things. Mm -hmm. Because we as a people didn't serve the Most High God with joy and with gladness of heart for the abundance of all things, meaning for the earth, right? Because the earth was made for us, read. Therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies. As a result, God said we would serve our enemies. Which the Lord shall send against thee. Which the Lord shall send against us. It's the Lord that sent the Africans, the Arabs, and the white man against us, read. Which the Lord shall send against thee in hunger, mm -hmm. and in thirst, and in nakedness. Meaning if we want food, clothing, or anything to drink, we must serve our enemies, read. And in want of all things. What does that part mean? And in want of all things. Meaning, if you want anything, you got to serve your enemies. That includes if you want toilet paper to use the bathroom. you got to go to your enemies. If you want to learn the Bible, who did we have to go to in the past? Our enemies. That's what that part, read that part again. Therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies, which the Lord shall send against thee in hunger, and in thirst, and in nakedness, and in want of all things. Come on. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck. Stop. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck. When we got off those slave ships, and we were sold for bond men and bond women, the Bible lets us know we would have yokes of iron upon our neck. So, because you got these other nations, so well, everybody was slaves. No, 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 no. Everybody wasn't on cargo slave ships. Everybody didn't have yokes of iron on their neck. Everybody wasn't sold to their enemies. So stop lying. And you dumb black men and black women that fall for that garbage, shame on you. Okay? Because some of you are the first ones to say, everybody was slaves at one time. Shut up. Go ahead. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he have destroyed thee. What does that part mean? And until, until he have destroyed thee. What does that part mean? Meaning the yokes of iron didn't come off our neck until we were destroyed mentally and spiritually as a people. That's why you walk around with no yokes of iron on your neck. There's no need to have you leashed up like an animal because your mind is destroyed already. Your mind's like jello pudding, okay? You ain't going nowhere. You ain't trying to overcome. You ain't trying to return to who you once were. Huh? You ain't trying to do that. Let's go back now to Psalms. No, from there. Get me 1 Kings 8. That's what I want. 1 Kings 8. Because we're dealing with the part in Psalms where it says, And there they that carried us away captive. We went to Deuteronomy 28, 68, verse 47 and 48. Now we're going to 1 Kings 8. We want verse 46 and 47. 1 Kings 8, verse 46. 
if they sin against thee, for there is no man that sinneth not. Who's speaking? King Solomon. If they sin against thee, for there's no Israelite that sins not. And I'll be angry with them. And you be angry, and God be angry with the Israelites. And deliver them to the enemy. And what? And deliver them to the enemy. And what? And deliver them to the enemy. So who delivered us to the enemy? God of heaven and earth. That's why Moses said, At whom the Lord shall bring against thee. Go ahead. So that they carry them away captives. See that part right there? Whom they carry, read that part. So that they carry them away captive. So that they carry them away captive. So that they carry them away captive. Go ahead. Unto the land of the enemy. Unto the land of the enemy. Do you hear what the Bible is saying? What the Bible is prophesying? Go ahead. Far or near. Far or near from Jerusalem. Go ahead. Yet if they shall bethink themselves. What verse are you at? 47. 47. Yet. If the Israelites, regardless of them being carried away captive, yet if they shall bethink themselves, meaning remember who they are, go ahead. In the land whither they were carried captives, come on, and repent, and what? And repent, go ahead, and make supplication unto thee in the land of them that carried them captive, saying, We have sinned and have done perversely, we have committed wickedness. So now that's what the Lord requires of us. Let's go back to Psalms 137. You were at verse 3. Read verse 3 again. Psalms 137 verse 3. Mm -hmm. For there they that carried us away captive. Stop. For there they that carried us away captive. Now you have the proper precepts that explains who carried us away and what time period was that? Huh? During the 1600s, 1600s, 1700s, 1800s. Okay, 1500s. Understand that. Read it again. For there they that carried us away captive required of us a song. They wanted us to sing. Sing, niggas! Sing! Sing us a song. They wanted us to sing for them. Go ahead. And they that wasted us. And they that what? And they that wasted us. And they that wasted us. What, what, what does that part mean? They, it said they carried us away captive. They required of us a song. And they that wasted us. See, some of you black men and black women, you don't realize you're, you've been wasted as a people. But I'm going to show you what that means. Go right back to Deuteronomy 28 and 48 because you've forgotten. what we, we just read it. King David in the spirit said, they that wasted us. Read verse 48, Deuteronomy 28, 48. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 48. Come on. Therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies. Therefore thou shalt serve thine enemies. Which the Lord shall send against thee mm -hmm. in hunger. In hunger, you gotta serve your enemies. And in thirst. If you want water to drink, you gotta serve your enemies. And in nakedness. If you want clothing to cover your naked bodies, you must serve your enemies. Come on. And in want of all things. If you want education, you want any understanding about God. If you want to get married, if you want to have a baby, if you want to bury your dead. If you want toilet paper, anything you require, the Bible forth prophesies you must serve your enemies. Watch this. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck. How long? Upon thy neck until he have destroyed thee. Until you have been destroyed. What is that word destroy synonymous with? Wasted. Wasted. Read that in Psalms 137 again. For they that carried us away captive required of us a song. And they that wasted us. And they that wasted us. Remember Deuteronomy 28 again? The bottom precept. And they shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he have destroyed thee. Until we have been destroyed. Destroyed how? Mentally and spiritually as a people. That's why even among some of you black women, you some of you claim that you're Israelites. But you're quick to call us and want to teach us. You're still destroyed. Why? Because you're not in your right state of mind in submitting yourself to the black man who God says is the God's kings and priests of the earth. You're quick to call us, to quit to run your mouth because you still got that American frame of mind. You don't know, brothers. See, because you got to do this, my brother. You got to. Sisters, you're not in your proper order. Because you're still mentally and spiritually destroyed as a people. You brothers too that walk around with your pants below your butt. You're destroyed. You've, you've been wasted spiritually and mentally in your mind. Okay? From there, let's deal some more. Jeremiah 17 and 4. We're still dealing with the part in Psalms 137. They that carried us away captive required of us a song. They that wasted us. We went to precepts to explain what does it mean we've been wasted. We've been destroyed according to Deuteronomy 28 verse 48. 
Now we're in Jeremiah 17 and 4. Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 4. And thou even thyself shall discontinue from thine heritage. This is what it means when it says we've been wasted. This is what it means when it says we've been destroyed. Read it again. And thou even thyself shall discontinue from thine heritage. We've discontinued from our heritage. What is our heritage? This Bible. The Bible says that we're the Israelites. The Bible says we must keep the law, statutes, and commandments. The Bible says we are one true king. That's who we all the world calls Jesus the Christ, the black Messiah. But we've discontinued from our heritage. Read it again. And thou even thyself shall discontinue from thy heritage. So what is that word discontinued reference to? Wasted. Destroyed. Read it again. And thou even thyself shall discontinue from thine heritage that I gave thee, mm -hmm. and I will cause thee to serve thine enemies in the land which thou knowest not. In the land which thou knowest not. So what is this land which thou knowest not? The United States of America, the Caribbean islands, and all the lands wherein we are scattered. Let's go back to, uh, no, from there, go to Daniel 7 and 25. Daniel chapter 7 and verse 25. Daniel chapter 7 verse 25. Listen good. And he shall speak great words against the Most High. The he here is talking about the white man, mainly this white man here in America. He shall speak great words against the Most High. He says God is a white man. Christ is a white man. The Israelites are white. Okay? He says, I am God on earth. He said, if you got anything wrong with you, you come to the white man to get it fixed. He says he created uh, uh, how to travel with spaceships, okay, with planes, okay. He created the cars, the under the ra the railroad systems, okay. Read it again. And he shall speak great words against the Most High, mm -hmm. and shall wear out the saints of the Most High. That's the part I wanted right there. And what? And wear out the saints of the Most High. So what's the word we want that's synonymous with wasted in Psalms 137? Uh, wear out. Wear out the saints. How did this man wear us out? In slavery, hard slavery. He weared us out. How? We discontinued from our heritage. How? We put yokes of iron upon our necks until we were destroyed as a people. He whipped our backs. He raped our mothers. He raped our fathers. He destroyed us. He destroyed our language, our customs. Read it again. And he shall speak great words against the Most High and shall wear out the saints of the Most High. Because we're the saints of the Most High. Hold on, give me that in Psalms 148. He also exalted the horn of his people. He also exalted the horn of his people. The praise of all his saints. Because the horn of our people is Jesus the Christ. He's the king. He's the leader. Go ahead. The praise of all his saints. And Christ is the praise of all the saints. Come on. Even of the children of Israel. Even of the children of Israel. It's explaining the saints. Even meaning indeed of the children of Israel. Let's go back to Daniel. Daniel 7 verse 25 again. Okay. We're still dealing with where David said that those that carried us away captive wasted us. Go ahead. Daniel 7 verse 25. And he shall speak great words against the Most High, and shall wear out the saints of the Most High, and think to change times and law. Just like in a few days. We got to turn the clock. Is it an hour back? Hour back. We got to turn spring. How does it go? Spring yeah. forward, fall back. Fall back. And in the fall, you bring the clock back an hour. Read that bottom precept again. In case you confuse who this is talking about. And think to change times and laws. Who is this talking about? The white man. What times has he changed? Daylight savings time. What laws has he changed? God says the, the, the year starts in the springtime. The white man says, no, no, no. It starts in the dead of winter, just for example. On another lesson, I'm going to go more in depth with that, but not today. And a big law he's pushing right now is same-sex marriage. Exactly. The Bible is against that. And he's saying that it's okay for two men or two women to be together. Exactly. Let's go to Revelation 13 now. Revelation 13, verse 6 and 7. We're still dealing with how we were wasted, meaning destroyed, uh, meaning worn out. They weared us out. Okay? Revelation 13, verse 6. And he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God. This is still talking about that white man. The same white man. Go ahead. To blaspheme his name. He blasphemed God's name. He said God is white. And his tabernacle. He says all the angels are white. The Israelites are white. Go ahead. And them that dwell in heaven. Right, the angels. Go ahead. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints. It was given unto this white man to make war with the saints. Now we already explained who the saints are. Who are the saints? That's right, the 12 tribes of Israel. Go ahead. 
And to overcome them. And to what? And to overcome them. So now what's the part that we want that, that is synonymous for wasted us? Overcame us. How did they overcome us? When they conquered us and put us in slavery. They overcame us. So this whole chapter is written in the parable form. But if you don't know Deuteronomy 28, you're never going to figure this out. Go ahead. One more piece. And power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. Now, if you were so too confused to understand who that's talking about, what nation of men is ruling over what? All tongues and kindreds and nations. Who's that? Is that the East Indian man that's ruling oh. over all people, nations? Oh. No, it's talking about the so-called white man. They okay? control the sky, the waters, the land. They control everything. So it's no confusion in our minds who this is talking about. Some of you, you must, all of you must come out of the diabolical, maniacal church system. Now let's go back to Psalms 137, and we were at verse 3 again. Psalms 137, verse 3. Listen good. For they that carried us away captive required of us a song, mm -hmm. and they that wasted us. Now that's, all, that's why we went to all those precepts. They that wasted us. Go ahead. Required of us mirth. They required of us mirth. They wanted us. What does mirth mean? Mirth means laughter. They wanted us to make them. We, they wanted us to sing and make them laugh. Go ahead. And, re, and required of us mirth, saying, sing us one of those songs of Zion. Sing us one of the songs of Zion. What is that talking about? They wanted to mock us. What are the songs of Zion? Because you Israelite, let me tell you something about you and your Gospels. You think you're singing the songs of Zion, but you're not singing the songs of Zion. Watch this. Read this. Read, read, read. How shall we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? How shall we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? Now, why did, that, why did what the Israelites say that in the spirit? Why would we say that? Because in order for us to sing one of the songs of Zion, the white man would laugh at us. They would mock us. Why? What are some? What are the songs of Zion? Hold on, get Psalms one forty nine. Let's read one of the songs of Zion. Now, brothers, sisters, because some of you writers, you get angry when we speak against your lying Christian gospel songs. <laughs> I'm gonna prove to you right now that not one of your churches, not one, are singing the songs of Zion. I'm going to read the Psalms of Zion right here in Psalms 149. Start at verse 1. Psalms 149, verse 1. Praise ye the Lord. Sing unto the Lord a new song. Sing unto the Lord a new song. Come on. And his praise in the congregation of saints. Come on. Let Israel rejoice in him that made him. Let Israel rejoice in him that made him. How do we rejoice in him that made us? By keeping his laws, his statutes, his commandments. Keeping his high holy days, his festival days. But you've not been rejoicing in the one true God. Whose holidays are you celebrating? Christmas, Halloween, Thanksgiving. Whose days are those? Because if they're in the Bible, I challenge any of you. Give us the scripture in verse. Read. Let the children of Zion be joyful in their king. Come on. Let them praise his name in the dash. Come on. Let them sing praises unto him with the timbrel and harp. Come on. For because the Lord... they in church say, we got the timbrel and harp. Let's see if you singing this. Come on. For the Lord taketh pleasure in his people. No, the Lord takes pleasure in all races. For the Lord taketh pleasure in his people. In his people. Come on. He will beautify the meek with salvation. Because Christ said, the meek shall inherit the earth. Let the saints be joyful in glory. Go ahead. Let them sing aloud upon their bed. Watch this. Let the high praises of God be in their mouth. What is the high praises of God that's going to be in our mouth? The laws, the commandments of the Bible. Go ahead. Let the high praises of God be in their mouth and a two-edged sword in their hand. And, and a two-edged sword in our hand. So, because some of them say, oh, the two-edged sword is the Bible, like Hebrews 4 says. No. It says, let the high praises of God, which is the Bible, be in our mouth. So what's in our hand? A literal sword. Why? To execute vengeance upon the heathen. To execute vengeance upon the nations. That's what the word heathen means. To execute vengeance on the nations. Are you singing about that in church? Huh? Come on. To execute vengeance upon the heathen and punishments upon the people. Because those nations we don't kill, what are we going to do with them? And what? To bind no, them. No, no. And what? To execute vengeance upon the heathen. So the ones that we don't kill, what are we going to do? To execute vengeance upon the heathen 
and punishments upon the people. Punishments upon the people. What does that part mean? Read. To bind their kings with chains. We gonna bind, this is the vengeance. We gonna bind their kings in chains. And their nobles with fetters of iron. And their, read it like that, and their nobles with fetters of iron. Read it again. To bind their kings with chains and their nobles with fetters of iron. That's right. That's vengeance. Why? Because we just read in Deuteronomy 28 that our enemies put yokes of iron on our necks, okay? So the vengeance is we gonna put yokes of iron on their necks, on the necks of their kings, on the necks of their nobles. Here's my question again to you. Are you singing that in Sunday school? When you have your lying gospel fest, are you singing that? Because some of you effeminate black men, you go, brother, you going off speaking against the Christian church. I just challenged you. Show me one Christian church that's singing about vengeance on their enemies. Read verse one again. Praise ye the Lord. Sing unto the Lord a new song. This is what you're supposed to be singing. Go back now to where you left off. To execute vengeance upon the heathen mm -hmm. and punishments upon the people. Mm -hmm. To bind their kings with chains and their nobles with fetters of iron. To execute upon them the judgment written. We're going to execute upon them the judgment written. Meaning everything this Bible says to do upon the nations, the Israelites are going to do it. The true Israelites shall fulfill it. So you effeminate, Christianized, chocolate-covered, Hebraic, uh, Sunday, Sabbath, worship Israelites... Because some of you are just like the Christian church. You go, Yah, Yah does not want us to execute vengeance, brother. Yah wants us to love all nations. Yah wants us to love all people. See, you're still stuck in Christianity. That's why when we hear your stupid phone calls, we dismiss you immediately. Because you ain't singing this. You ain't rejoicing in this. Come on. To execute upon them the judgment written, this honor have all his saints. This honor have all his saints. Praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. So now Amos 5. Amos 5, and I think it's verse 23. Okay? I'm still dealing with your, with the part where, where the Israelites said, how can we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? Amos 5, verse 23. Now listen, now we're going to Amos 5, verse 23 for you Christians in your gospel fest that say, oh, God just loves our song. We're going to have gospel, what do they call it? Competition. A gospel fest where we're going to challenge each other, battle each other, and see who sings the best gospel. And tell them why they're rehearsing. The spirit of the Lord is on it. Right. You don't have the spirit of the Lord. <laughs> this is what God says about these false gospel songs. Go ahead. Take thou away from me the noise of thy song. So your gospel songs are what? Noise of thy song. The noise. God says, take them away. Because you're not singing nothing as Bible's talking about. That's why I said, so you brothers, you effeminate men, you masculine wannabe men, women out there, you talking about you in the church. You lesbians and homosexual black men and black women, Latin men and Latin women. You ain't singing nothing as Bible. So let's go back to Psalms. Psalms 137. And I want that verse again. Okay, verse Psalms three. 137, verse 3. For they, for they that carried us away captive. For they that carried us away captive. Who is the they? The white man carried us away captive. Required of us a song. He wanted, the white man wanted us to sing, wants us to sing songs. Go ahead. And they that wasted us. They that destroyed us mentally. They that wasted us mentally and spiritually. Required of us mirth. They wanted us to make them laugh. How? Saying. Sing us one of those songs of Zion. Why would that make them laugh? Why would one of the songs of Zion make them laugh? Can you imagine us singing Psalms 140 now now? We in the bottom of society. We're in slavery. They go, ha, ha, ha. These niggas are saying that we going into slavery. You niggas is crazy. Sing that again. Whoa. You heard that song? Right, right. They would mock us. Mockery. They would mock us. While we singing songs of deliverance. Right. It's funny. That's right. That's like when we was in a slave... Uh, cotton fields, we would sing songs of deliverance. Swing low, sweet, sweet chariot. chariot, coming for to carry me home. The white man sat on the stoop, rocking in his chair, laughing at us. Yeah, swing low, niggas. Sweet chariot, coming for to carry me home. <laughs> Pick that cotton, nigga. Get back to work. <laughs> That's how they did us. All right. See, you blacks in your Christian churches, you've been deceived. You've been hoodwinked. You've been bamboozled. Okay? 
What verse you at? Verse, verse 4. Okay. How shall we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? How can we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? Didn't we just read that in Jeremiah? Hold that. Go back to Jeremiah 17.4 again. Go right back there again. The strange land. What is the strange land? Jeremiah 17 verse Jeremiah 4. Jeremiah chapter 17 verse 4. And thou even thyself shalt discontinue from thine heritage we've, that I gave thee. We've discontinued from my heritage. How? We've been wasted as a people. Go ahead. And I will cause thee to serve thine enemies. Where? Thine enemies where? in the land in the land which thou knowest not. That's the where. In the land which thou knowest not. That's this land here. The United States of, ba of America, Babylon the Great. The United States of Babylon. Let's go back to Psalms 137, verse 4 again. Psalms 137, verse 4. How shall we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? So the Lord's song. Hold on. Give me Revelation 15. Revelation 15, verse 2 and 3. Revelation chapter 15, verse 2. Listen good. And I saw, as it were, a sea of glass mingled with fire. Because there's going to be great destruction. This is the sea of glass mingled with fire. And them that had gotten the victory over the beast. Them that had gotten the victory over the beast is the 144,000. 12,000 of each of the tribes of Israel. Okay? And the multitudes that are with them, which are Israelites. Go ahead. And over his image. We got a, the victory over the image of the beast. That white image of Jesus Christ is the image of the beast. We got the victory! John sees us getting the victory over that. Read. And over his mark. And over his mark. What is his mark? Sin. His Christian doctrine. Okay? His political doctrine. Understand it. Come on. And over the number of his name. Right. His whole political system. That's the number of his name, which is Babylon the Great. Go ahead. Stand on the sea of glass, having the harps of God. Watch this. And they sing the song of Moses. Uh-oh. And they sing the song of of Moses that's recorded in Deuteronomy 32 and they sing what the song of Moses go ahead the servant of God and the song of the lamb saying and the song of the lamb and the song of the lamb see what you all don't understand the song of Moses and the song of the lamb is the same song about Israel going into slavery but getting the victory over the nations that enslaved them that's what Psalms 149 is about. That's the song of Moses. That's the song of the Lamb, for an example. But are y'all singing that in your churches? Huh? No, you're not. Let's go back to Psalms 137 and verse 4 again. Psalms 137 verse 4. Mm -hmm. How shall we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? Come on, what verse you at now? Verse 5. Come on. If I forget thee, O Jerusalem, let my right hand forget her cunning. What does that mean? If I forget thee, O Jerusalem, let my right hand forget her cunning. If I forget thee. Did we forget Jerusalem? In order to remember Jerusalem, you must remember what? Your nationality. You must remember that you are the sons and daughters of Zion. You must remember that you are the sons and daughters of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You must remember that you are the Israelites. Read it again. Verse 5. If I forget thee, O Jerusalem, let my right hand forget her cutting. So what does that mean? Hold on. Get me Psalms 48, verse 10. What does it mean, let my right hand forget her cunning? What does that mean? Psalms 48, verse 10. Psalms 48, verse 10. Mm -hmm. According to thy name, O God, so is thy praise unto the ends of the earth. Thy right hand is full of righteousness. Thy right hand is full of righteousness. So what? Thy right hand is full of righteousness. Get me Deuteronomy 6.25. I just went to that precept to lead you to the next precept that's going to give you the great understanding. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 25. Remember, Psalms 48, verse 10 says, God's right hand is filled with righteousness. What, is that, what does righteousness mean? Go ahead. And it shall be our righteousness if we observe to do all these commandments before the Lord our God. And it shall be our righteousness if we, what? Observe to do all these commandments before the Lord our God. If we observe to do all the commandments before the Lord our God. So our righteousness, it means to keep the commandments of the Lord our God. Let's go back to Psalms 137 again. Psalms 137 verse 5. If I forget thee, O Jerusalem. If I forget thee, O Jerusalem, meaning if I forget my nationality. If I forget who I am. I forget my ancestors. 
Let my right hand forget her cunning. Meaning, let my right hand forget how to keep the commandments. That's what it means. Let us not keep the commandments because that's what happened to us as a people. We forgot our nationality. As a result, we forgot how to keep the laws of God. We were raised up in a society that said, mm -mm, you don't have to keep the laws of God. God's laws are done away with. That's what we've been taught. So we've forgotten our nationality and our right hand has forgotten how to do the law. Come on. If I do not remember thee, let my tongue cleave to the roof of my mouth. Now what does that part mean? If I do not remember thee, let my tongue cleave to the roof of my mouth. Hold that. Get Ezekiel chapter 3. Verse 25. But thou, son of man, behold, they shall put bands upon thee, mm -hmm. and they shall bind thee with them, and thou shalt not go out among them. Go ahead. And I will make thy tongue cleave to the roof of thy mouth. So this is what the Lord told Ezekiel. He would have yokes of iron on him in Babylon. He said, you shall not, not go out amongst them. And read that part again. And I will make my thy tongue cleave to the roof of thy mouth. I will make your tongue cleave to the roof of your mouth. For your tongue to cleave to the roof of your mouth, try and talk like that. Put your tongue to the roof of your mouth. Can you talk properly? You can't. It's inaudible. It's going to explain what it means. Read that again. And I will make thy tongue cleave to the roof of thy mouth, that thou shalt be dumb, and shall not be able, and shall not be to them a reprover. What does it mean, you shall not be to them a reprover? How do we reprove the people with the laws of God? So what does this mean? That Ezekiel would not be speaking right. That was an analogy. So today, your church ministers, your mothers, your fathers, because they've forgotten Jerusalem, because their right hand has forgotten the, their cunning, their tongue cleaves to the roof of their mouth so that they're no, they're no longer a reprover, meaning they're not speaking the laws of God, okay? They're not speaking properly. What are they speaking? They're saying God is white and God loves everyone Praise the Lord. Amen. Now, little boys, give me your booty. That's what you're saying in your churches, your wicked churches, okay? You're not speaking the proper laws of the Most High God, okay? So now, go back to Psalms 137. Now we have the understanding of that. Read that again. Psalms 137, verse 6. Mm -hmm. If I do not remember thee, let my tongue cleave to the roof of my mouth. If I prefer not Jerusalem above my chief joy. Do you remember Jerusalem? Do you prefer Jerusalem above your chief joy? Huh? What does that mean that you prefer Jerusalem above your chief joy? Meaning you relish and love this Bible above everything. Okay? Whatever this Bible says, that's your chief joy. That's what you wake up with. That's what you go to sleep with. Oh, here we go. The dumb Hebraic Christian who goes, yes. I love the Lord. I love the Bible. No, you don't, and I'm going to prove it to you. Hold on. Deuteronomy 28, 47. Why did we go into slavery as a people? Huh? Because we didn't prefer Jerusalem above our chief joy. Read that. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 47. Mm -hmm. Because thou servest not the Lord thy God with joyfulness and with gladness of heart for the abundance of all things. Therefore shall thou serve thy enemies. Why do we serve our enemies? Because we didn't serve the Lord our God with joyfulness and with gladness of heart. Do you understand what that means? That when Moses gave us the laws, we had a screw face. The hell is thou shalt not commit it. What? Pass it. What? Feast the top. What? We always had an attitude. Okay? So now, give me first John. Watch that. I'm gonna go to the New Testament to show you that John spoke about the same thing. I believe it's five and three. First John, John 5 and 5 three. verse 3. For this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments. Watch this. And his commandments are not grievous. Why does he say, and his commandments are not grievous? Because of our ancestors in the past. Because of you at home. Because the laws, the commandments of God are grievous to you. We get many emails from dumb, unlearned Negroes. We don't got to keep the laws of God. And these are my reasons why. I'm not reading those emails. Don't bother writing us with your garbage. Just wait for the missiles to come and die, nigga, die, if you can't repent, okay? I'm not here to fight with you about the laws of God. Our job is to teach you the laws of God, teach you your history, and keep it moving. Those of you that want to call us up and curse us out about you ain't keeping the laws of God, you just hold on and wait for the missiles to come because you're going to get put to death. Understand that. So now let's go back to Psalms 137 
And the verse you left off with, I believe, was verse 5 again. Psalms 137, verse 5. Or verse 6. Verse 6, I'm sorry. If I do not remember thee, let my tongue cleave to the roof of my mouth. Meaning what? That we as a people would not speak properly. We would not speak the oracles of God. We would not speak the laws, statutes, and commandments. We would not remember our nationality. We would not remember who the 12 tribes of Israel are. Read. If I prefer not Jerusalem above my chief joy. This is supposed to be our chief joy. Even for you hypocrite Christians who say you love the Lord. You know, I've been on many Christian pages and I put laws up there and they blast the laws of God with such hatred. Come on. Verse 7. Remember, O Lord, the children of Edom. Remember, O Lord, the children of who? Edom. Edom. That's why I said to you at the beginning of the lesson that what David is prophesying goes beyond ancient Babylon. That David is prophesying about Babylon the Great, the nation of Edom. Read it again. Remember, O Lord, the children of Edom. Go ahead. In the day of Jerusalem, who said, raise it, raise it. Meaning destroy it, destroy it. Even to the foundation thereof. The Edomites helped the ancient Babylonians destroy the 12 tribes of Israel. Hold up, let me prove that. Give me Obadiah. The book of Obadiah, we want verse 8 through 14. Obadiah, verse 8. Mm -hmm. Shall I not in that day, saith the Lord, even destroy the wise men out of Edom, out of and Edom, the understanding come on. out of the mouth of Esau? Mm -hmm. And thy mighty men, O Taman, shall be dismayed to the end that everyone of the mount of Esau may be cut off by slaughter. Everyone from the mount of Esau shall be cut off by slaughter. Read. For thy violence against thy brother Jacob. For their violence. Because of the violence against their brother Jacob, against their violence against us. Come on. For thy violence against thy brother Jacob, shame shall cover thee. Shame shall cover all Esau's descendants. Why? Because of their violence against us. Read. And thou shalt be cut off forever. They shall be cut off forever. Come on. And the day that thou stoodest on the other side. Because when the Babylonians came in against us, which were the Ethiopians, it says the Edomites stood on the other side. Go ahead, let's see what they did. In the day that the strangers carried away captive his forces. When the Babylonians came and took away our riches, they destroyed and robbed our temples. Go ahead. And foreigners entered into his gates. They entered into our gates, the Babylonians. Watch this. And cast lots upon Jerusalem, even thou wast as one of them. The Edomites was as one of them. The Edomites, which were the brothers to the 12 tribes of Israel, helped the nations destroy us. Come on. But thou shouldest not have looked on the day of thy brother in the day that he became a stranger. They should not have looked upon us. The Edomites should not have looked upon us in the day that the Israelites became what? Became a stranger. Proving that the Israelites became strangers to the one true God. When we went into slavery, we became strangers. Read. Neither shouldest thou have rejoiced over the children of Judah in the day of their destruction. And you, Edomites, should not have rejoiced over the children of Judah. And the day in our distress, come on. Neither shouldest thou have spoken proudly in the day of distress. What verse you at? Verse 13 now. Come on. Thou shouldest not have entered into the gate of my people in the day of their calamity. So what is God saying to Obadiah? He's letting the Edomites know you should have not have done the evil that you did. And because you did that evil, you're going to be cut off in the future. You're going to be destroyed as a people. That's what God is letting the Edomites know through Obadiah. Go ahead. Thou shouldest not have entered into the gate of my people in the day of their calamity. Yea, thou shouldest not have looked on their affliction in the day of their calamity, nor have laid hands on their substance in the day of their calamity. What verse is that? Verse 13. Now I'm at 14. Go ahead. Neither shouldest thou have stood in the crossway to cut off those of his that did escape. Read that again. Neither shouldest thou have stood in the crossway to cut off those of his that did escape. What does that part mean? When the Israelites found a way to escape, the Edomites had circled our land, and they cut us off and trapped us and brought us to, uh, brought us to Babylon. That's what the Edomites did. Okay? Now let's go back to Psalms 137. Okay? What verse you at? Psalms 137, verse 7. Go ahead. Remember, O Lord, the children of Edom in the day of Jerusalem, who said, Raise it. Raise it, even to the foundation thereof. Meaning destroy it. Destroy it, even to the foundation thereof. So the Edomites wanted to destroy us. They helped Babylon destroy us. Read. O daughter of Babylon. What is it calling the Edomites? O daughter of Babylon. What is it calling the children of Esau? O daughter of Babylon. O 
daughter of Babylon. O daughter of Babylon. Real quick, watch this. Get me, what verse was that? That was 8. Verse 8. Get Zechariah 2, verse 6 and 7. I'm going to show you prophetically where the children of Israel would dwell. It may be called Esau the daughter of Babylon. Watch this. Zechariah chapter 2, verse 6. 6 and 7 we want. Ho, ho, come forth and flee from the land of the north. The land of the north is what? North America. Watch this. Saith the Lord. For I have spread you abroad as the four winds of the heaven, saith the Lord. Mm -hmm. Deliver thyself, O Zion. Deliver thyself, O Zion. That dwellest with the daughter of Babylon. That dwellest, meaning lives, with the daughter of Babylon. Read that part again. Deliver thyself, O Zion, that dwellest with the daughter of Babylon. What is that mainly going with? Which tribe primarily dwells with Esau? Judah. Judah. Okay, because that's the head tribe. Does Judah have their own land over here? No, they don't. Who do they live with? The daughter of Babylon. Where's the daughter of Babylon? The land of the north. Where's the land of the north? North America. North America. Let's go back to Psalms 137 and verse 8 again. O daughter of Babylon, who are to be destroyed. O daughter of Babylon. So who's the daughter of Babylon? The Edomites. The Edomites. The Edomites. The children of Esau. Go ahead. O daughter of Babylon, who art to be destroyed. What verse you at? Verse 8. Mm -hmm. Happy shall he be that rewardeth thee as thou hast served us. Happy shall he be that rewardeth thee as thou hast served us. Come on. Happy shall he be that mm -hmm. taketh and dasheth thy little ones against the stone. Happy shall he be that taketh thy little ones, meaning your, your little babies, and dash them against the stones. What is David seeing in the spirit? Give me Isaiah 13. Isaiah 13, we're going to start at verse 13. Because the prophet Isaiah saw a prophecy for Babylon. Isaiah 13, get me the, I think it's verse 2 that tells you where it's at. Um, one and read one and two. Isaiah chapter 13, verse 1. The burden of Babylon. The which, burden of who? The burden of Babylon. That's all I wanted. Now jump down to verse 13 to let you know who. That this Babylon is not talking about ancient Babylon, but it's talking about the future Babylon called the daughter of Babylon, called Babylon the Great in the book of Revelation. Watch what Isaiah says. Isaiah 13, verse 13. Therefore I will shake the heavens, and the earth shall remove out of her place. When will the Lord shake the heavens? This is talking about the second coming of Christ. When will the earth be removed out of its place? When the bombs hit America, the earth is going to move off her axis. Christ is going to come in the midst, and it says the whole earth shall move out of her place. Read it again. Therefore I will shake the heavens, and the earth shall remove out of her place. Did that happen with ancient Babylon? No, it did not. Read. In the wrath of the Lord of hosts. In the wrath of the Lord of hosts. That's the second coming. And in the day of his fierce in anger. In the day of his fierce anger. Come on. And it shall be as a chaste robe. The it that shall be as a chaste robe. Who's ruling Babylon? Huh? We already proved it. Edom. Remember, O Lord, the children of Edom. O daughter of Babylon, who ought to be destroyed. Read it again. And it shall be as a chaste robe. So the it that shall be like a chaste deer is the white man, the nation of Edom. Read. And it shall be as a chaste robe, and as a sheep that no man taketh up. Because in this day, the day of the Lord, nobody's going to help the so-called white man. Come on. They shall every man turn to his own people. What? They shall every man turn to his own people. So you don't black men and black women. Oh, it's going to be a sad day for you when you marry to the white man. You marry to the white woman. Read it again. They shall every man turn to his own people mm -hmm. and flee everyone into his own land. Because you black men, you don't know your homeland. You don't know who you are. Watch this. Everyone that is found. Everyone that is found joined to the white man in that day. Married to the white man, married to the white woman. Everyone that is found shall be thrust through. Shall be what? Shall be thrust Every through. Every white man found shall be thrust through. Watch this. And everyone that is joined unto them. Everyone that is joined unto them, meaning married to them. Go ahead. Shall fall by the sword. Shall what? Shall fall by the sword. Shall fall by the sword. Jump up to verse 8. Verse 8. And they shall be afraid. Pangs and sorrows shall take hold of them. Mm -hmm. They shall be in pain as a woman that travaileth. They shall be amazed one at another. Their faces shall be as flames. What does it mean when it says their faces shall be as flames? Red. What color is the so-called white man? Red. 
red. So in case you're doubting who this is talking about, they red from the top of their head to the tip of their feet, okay? They are red. So now, get back to that again. Everyone that is found, verse 15, everyone that is found shall be thrust through. All so-called white people, according to the Bible, that is found in that day shall fall by the edge of the sword. They shall be thrust through, meaning killed. Because the nations, when they see who Christ is coming against, they go, brothers and sisters, all we can do is warn you. A lot of you like to, some of you at home, you hear the scriptures and you look for scriptures to justify you being married to the other nation. You're going to get punished in that day. Watch this. Everyone that is found shall be thrust through, and everyone that is joined unto them shall fall by the sword. Everyone that is joined unto them shall fall by the sword. Everyone that is joined unto them shall fall with the sword. Watch this. Their children also shall be dashed to pieces before their eyes. My little biracial baby. Their children also shall be dashed to pieces be before their eyes. Because you know what, you black women, a lot of you, you, you don't realize that the seed comes through the man. You don't want no, what do you call, I heard some of you say, I don't want no jigaboo, cotton picking, nappy, nappy head baby. Big nose. Big nose, big lip baby. You tall baby, you don't want that. You want that very light skin, uh, blue eyed, straight hair, straight hair baby. Read that again. So that you understand, it's not, it's not our word. This is what God says. 13 verse 16. Their children also shall be dashed to pieces before their eyes. Their children also shall be dashed to pieces before their eyes. See, it's going to be a sad day for you black women in that day. See, a lot of you that want to marry outside your race, outside, because you hate your fathers. Okay, you got something against your uncle, your grandfather, he might have touched you. So you hate all black men. You're going to rue the day when you took the sins of a father, took the sins of an uncle, took the sins of a grandfather, and put it on a whole race of us. You're going to rue that day. And let me day. add something. And to you black women that hate the black men so much for the condition that there is, if you was reading the Bible, you'll see the Most High is raising up great men. Okay, if you were reading the scriptures, you would see that they're not all the N-word, niggers like y'all like to say. There's great black men that's being raised up. In the same chapter, it says that. That he's going to make a man more precious than gold. That's what you should be looking for. Let's get that. Verse 12 it is, I think. Isaiah 13. 13 verse, verse 12. 12. I will make a man more precious than fine gold. What man is that talking about? The Israelite man. That black man you call nigger, coon, jigaboo, nappy, kinky hair, that man, okay? The Latin man that you spit upon, that you say, get out of our country. That's the Israelite man that a lot of you black and Latin women, you despise us. You're going to rue the day that you stuck your lip out against us and opened your mouth. You're going to rue that day. Now, what verse you left off at? Verse 12? Good. No, back oh, to 15 um, and 16. 16. Go ahead. Their children also shall be dashed to pieces before their eyes. Their houses shall be spoiled and their wives ravished. Mm. Behold, I will stir up the means against them. Because when it says the means, it's not talking about the ancient times. The Lord is still dealing with the nations that's going to come against Babylon the Great. It's written <clears throat> as a metaphor. Give me Revelation 18. Time is winding down now. So now we explain Psalms 137, okay? Revelation 18, I'm sorry. Verse 1 and 2. Revelation chapter 18, verse 1. And after these things, I saw another angel come down from heaven, having great power, and the earth was lightened with his glory. So this is John the Revel Revelator on the island of Patmos. He sees a vision. Watch this. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, he saying... He sees an angel scream mightily, saying what? Babylon the Great is fallen, is fallen, and has become the habitation of devils. So what is John seeing in the vision? He sees the fall of the United States of America. He sees America being destroyed, okay? He say, he yells out, the angel yells out, Babylon the Great is fallen, is fallen, and has become the habitation of devils, meaning unclean beasts, like you read in Isaiah 34. Read. And the hold of every false spirit and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. That's the proof. Read. For all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. All nations obey America. You got some brothers and sisters that go, I'm going to leave Babylon, and I'm going to another country, and I'm going to build a life there. Read it again. 
For all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. You can't escape, brothers and sisters. If you go to the land, I'm going to tell you about our brothers and sisters in Demona, Israel. We love our brothers and sisters over there. But the Bible said what? For all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. Because our people that went to Demona, Israel, the white man who's in Israel, okay, who has a, a, a union with America, told them, if you want medical aid, you want dental aid, you want a citizenship, your young men and your young women must fight in our military against the Arabs, against the Palestinians. So, what do our people do in Demona, Israel? They put their young men in the military, their young women in the military to fight against the Palestinians. The Palestinians are not the only enemy. The white men you're supporting is one of the main enemies. That's Edom. So read it again so they understand this. For all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. You got brothers that go, I'm going to Liberia. I'm going to Kenya. Read it again. For all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. Meaning all countries have been influenced by the United States of America. Understand what I'm saying to you. Understand what the Bible is revealing to you. There's no escape. Read. And the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her. You see that? The kings, meaning all the presidents and the kings of the earth, have committed fornication, meaning spiritual idolatry with America. They've joined in some sense, either politically they join with America or religiously. There's some union, there's some agreement in buying and trade with America. So these nations are not going to turn against America for a nigga. They ain't going to do that. Understand that. Read. And the merchants of the earth are wax rich through the abundance of her delicacy. That's the proof. You think they're going to give up their riches, their wealth, that they've gotten through America for a Negro, for a Latino? They're not going to do it, brothers. They're not going to do it, sisters. Read. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Listen. Come out of her, my people. Come out of her, my people. So where are the people of God? Back up the verse 2 again. And he cried mightily with a strong voice saying, Babylon the great is fallen. Babylon the great. Read verse 4 again. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people. So where are the people of God? In Babylon. Where is Babylon? What Babylon is this talking about? The United States of America. The United States of Babylon. That's what this place is. Okay? That's what this place is. Read it again. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people. What does it mean, come out of her? We got to come out of America's religions. We got to come out of her politics. We got to come out of her whatever system that she has set up to manipulate our minds. We got to come out of it. Brothers, sisters, we got to cut it short, okay? But I need you to send in your donations. We need your financial help. We can't do it alone. We need your help to keep this gospel, this truth going. You're not going to hear it Sunday morning. You're not going to hear it Sunday night. You're not going to hear it in the church system, the political realm. You're not going to hear what we're showing you in the word of God. We're trying to show you the end is coming. You must prepare yourselves. And for, in order for us to get this gospel out, we need your help. We need you to put your brick in and help us. Visit us on our website at www.israelunite.org and www.youtube.com slash Nathaniel7. And with that, brothers and sisters, we say shalom. Shalom, Israel. For a copy of this show and all other shows, please visit our website at originalroyalty.com.